In this video, we discuss learning outcome number three of lesson 7.2. Here we're talking about how we find the margin of error and the point estimate X bar for our population mean, um, if we're given a confidence interval for the population mean. Now that point estimate of the population mean is the sample mean. And that's gonna be the average or the arithmetic mean of the upper and lower limits of the confidence interval. Remember how we computed that confidence interval in the first place. We took X bar and we added the error to get the upper limit and we subtracted the error to get the bottom limit. So the um, X bar that we're looking for, that's our point estimate. That's halfway in between the upper and lower limits. In order to find a number that's halfway in between two numbers, I just average them. I know that Mr. Triola wouldn't like that. And basically, I'm, well, I'm not just basically, I am exactly uh, taking the arithmetic mean. I just take the two numbers, I add them together, and I divide by two. Because so if I've got this number, and I've got this number, and I'm trying to find the value in the middle, the value directly in the middle is that number plus that number divided by two. Now, if I want to find the margin of error, and I've got the upper limit of the confidence interval and the lower limit of the confidence interval, I can notice that the distance from here to here is two times the margin of error. Because I've got one margin of error that gets me from the lower limit to the center, and then I've got another margin of error that takes me from the center to that upper limit. So I've got two of those right here. So if I want the margin of error, I just take the length of the interval, which is that top value minus that bottom value, and then I divide by two so that I get half the length. So it's easy enough to find X bar. That's our sample mean. We just add the two um, li limits and divide by two. And then to find the margin of error, we subtract the upper limit or we subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. And that's gonna give us the length of the interval and we divide by two to get half that length. Okay, so here's a question. It says, in a test of weight loss programs, 40 adults use the Atkins weight loss program a 90% confidence interval estimate of their mean weight loss after 12 months was found to be 0.8 pounds, which is less than the population mean, which is less than 3.4 pounds. Now remember how we interpret this. We're saying that we have 90% confidence that the true value in that population mean lies between 0.8 and 3.4 pounds, or in other words, if we were to create confidence intervals like this, this 100 times, or even we'll say 100 times, 90 of those times, the intervals that we would create would contain the true population mean. Or you could say nine out of 10 times, we would expect the intervals that we create to contain the true population mean. So we're saying that the true population mean is, is between 0 0.8 and 3.4, and we can say that with 90% confidence. Okay, now let's see the question. It says, find the sample mean of the weight loss and the margin of error of the confidence interval. So we want E, and we wanna know those 40 adults that were in the study, how much uh, weight did they lose? What was the mean weight loss for those 40 adults? Well, it's easy enough. The first thing I do is I draw my number line. I'm looking for the error and I'm looking for X bar. Well, X bar is directly in between that X bar plus that the margin of error and X bar minus the margin of error. So in order to find X bar, I just take the average or arithmetic mean of that top value and the bottom value. So I add them together and I divide by two. 3.4 plus 0.8 is 4.2. 4.2 divided by two is 2.1. So the mean weight loss in that group was only 2.1 pounds after a year. It's not much weight loss for a year. And then if I want the margin of error, there are a couple of ways I can do it. I can say this mean is 2.1 pounds. So if I'm going from 2.1 to 3.4, the margin of error must be 3.1.3, or because that's what it would take to get from 2.1 to 3.4. Or if I'm not using this computed X bar at all, I can say, well, the distance from the bottom of the confidence interval to the top of the confidence interval is two times the margin of error. If I want the margin of error, I just subtract these guys to get the length of the interval and then I divide by two. So I subtract 3.4 minus 0.8 and then I divide by two. That ends up being 2.6 divided by two, which is 1.3. 
which is exactly the same result you would have gotten if you had taken 2.1 and put it here and said 3.4 minus 2.1 is 1.3 and then 2.1 minus 0.8 is 1.3. So the margin of error um, can be checked that way as well.